Hi everyone, Cindy Krause from Krause House Sift and Thrift. I'm going to be doing something a little different today. Instead of talking about reselling, I'm going to show you some footage of when John and I went to Jackpot, Nevada a couple weeks ago, or maybe it was last weekend. And we just decided to kind of regale you guys with these stories from John's past. Um, I have a few too, which I'll share at a future date. But we um, were talking about what fun Air Force stories John has. He was in the Air Force for 10 years in the 80s. And he went to, um, well, I have stories about that. But uh, he went to Spain and Germany and San Antonio and Texas. And he had the time of his life. And during that time, he has some super fun and crazy stories of that time. So we thought we would tell you guys what they were because I personally find them very interesting. So I thought you guys might find them interesting too. And you know, even though I am a reseller and that's what this channel is mostly about, it's also fun to kind of mix it up and to kind of entertain you guys, not always educating you, but entertaining you too. Because if these are stories I find interesting, maybe you will too. Let me know if you like it. Send me a comment. And if you guys aren't subscribed, I would really appreciate it if you'd subscribe and give me a thumbs up, a like, and get ready for some fun stories coming up. tell the story how he got screwed by his recruiter in the Air Force. <laughs> kind of like Private um, Benjamin when they promised yeah, her yachts. Yeah. <laughs> and well, she didn't get them. When I uh, signed up for the Air Force, I was interested in broadcast journalism. And my recruiter said, sign right here. Yeah, no problem. So I did. And I go to basic training. And it's our sixth day of basic training. And I'm sitting at some woman's desk going through processing. And she said, so what job is it that you want? I said, broadcast journalism. And she said, do you know how to type? And I said, no. And I often wonder no, how my life... No, she said, sorry. Wait, wait. Okay, go ahead. Well, yeah, she said, I'm sorry, you can't have the job. And so I often wonder how my life would have changed if I had just said that one little word, yes, yes. instead of no. But that would have been lying. So anyway, if so I had done that, you didn't know. If I had said yes, I may not be married to you. You just never know how yeah, uh, things come together. Yep. So um, I went through the rest of basic training not knowing what I was going to be doing. In fact, I tried to get out. I tried. <laughs> And they said, no, you signed an, a non-guaranteed contract, which oh, I wasn't aware of. Of course. It was two days before we were leaving basic training, and our flight, there's 50 of us, we're sitting... That reminds me of other stories I can tell. <laughs> flight. Well, explain we're, what a flight is. A flight is, is the, um, the troop, uh, the, the, you know, the company, the, the group of guys that went through basic training. Together, right. Where there's okay. 50 of us. Okay. And uh, we're all sitting around in a semicircle with our drill instructor. He's well, passing my right orders. Here. And he grabs my orders and he says, Kraus. And then he starts laughing. And I'm like, oh boy, that's not a good sign. <laughs> and he says, Kraus, you're going to be a dental assistant. Congratulations, buddy. You're going to have fun cleaning crap out of people's mouths for the next four years. Have fun. But he used another, he used the dirty word. For yeah. Crap. And he threw the orders up in the air and the room erupted in laughter. <laughs> and I was freaking out because I thought, there's no way I can do that job. <laughs> there's, right. you know, I, the, the sight of blood and, you know, looking yeah. at people's mouths. That's how way. I would feel. But as it turns out, I did it for 10 years 
and as you know jobs go in the military it could have been a lot worse I you were a dental tech and a dental hygienist yes right? i was a dental hygienist and i'll tell the story some other time how the oh he's got a lot of those yeah. stories yeah and so uh anyway um yeah as as it went it wasn't a bad gig um it was just Monday through Friday, 7.30 to 4.30. Never worked a weekend the whole 10 years I was in the Air Force. Yeah, very nice. Um, worked with a lot of women. That wasn't terrible. And, uh, <laughs> You're a single guy. Yeah, and I had my own Got place off base. And, uh -huh. uh, so, uh, yeah, it, it turned it out okay. okay. Well, we're back, and Cindy reminded me of something I went through uh, back in the 80s when I was in the Air Force, I think it was 84. I wasn't there, just no, no. story. <laughs> Cindy and I didn't meet until 2015. I know, it was too late. Oh, well, not too late, but I, mean, I wish we had met sooner. Yeah, that's another story. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, we've got to tell her story one yeah. of these days. No, but I was a dental assistant in the Air Force, and at the time, I was in charge of dental radiology, and, uh... Sorry for the bumping issue, guys. We're on a bumpy road. There was a terrible plane crash. A C-130 went down in the mountains in Germany, in the Alps, and 33 Army personnel were killed. Everyone on board was killed. Oh, we're doing this story. Okay. Yeah. And, um... So we were the closest dental clinic and they needed to identify the bodies. And so they had them in a, in a refrigerated truck in a parking lot. And then it was a Friday afternoon. I was thinking about the weekend and all of a sudden, um, I forget who it was, my NCYC maybe. And he said, uh, Sergeant Krause, we're gonna need you to be in at 0600 tomorrow morning. Uh, we need you to take dental x-rays on all of the bodies oh, no. um, to help identify them. Nobody wants to do that. And um, from what I understand, they weren't burned up because they uh, they crashed in the snow. So they were all still intact. Oh, wow. And um, so I was like, uh, okay, see you tomorrow. And I then, really don't want to, yeah, so, yeah. but okay. <laughs> so I remember that evening thinking, not only do I don't want to do this, I don't think I can do this. Yeah, that's tough. It was just really traumatizing me, just the thought of having to go in there to experience that. And, you know, I was 22 years old at the time or so. I mean, if I was asked now, at my age, I think um, I would have thought differently about it. But I remember just deciding I wasn't going to do it, but it was an order. So around midnight or so, I called. Um, I don't even remember who it was that I called, but I called someone in charge. And I said, this is Sergeant Krause. My car's broke down in Segovia. <laughs> and uh, I'm not going to be able to get there. And I I really feel that they knew that uh, it was not a broken down car. But they didn't give me any grief about it at all. They said, okay, don't well, worry about they, it. Well, if they did know, they knew that you couldn't do it. I mean, yeah, so... That's a major mental task. I mean, <laughs> You'd have to... But I had to develop all the mentally, films. Mentally, um, totally you'd have to get over it. I had to develop all the films and that was pretty sobering. Oh, I don't know if I told you that. I don't So they handed did. me all the bite wings and they had blood on them oh, and stuff. Man. Oh, gosh. And, um, you know, I'm looking at the dental oh, x-rays thinking, knew. wow. It was the dead body. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. And I just really fell for those people. Yeah, I just cannot imagine... <laughs> You know, going through, uh, uh, you know, your last moments knowing that you're Dying. about to die. And so, uh, yeah. yeah, one of my uh, less happier moments in my Air Force career. Anyway.
anyway, I got other stories. Yeah, we got that, better stories. That's kind of serious. Yeah, but kind of. Yeah. I wanted him to share that because that's a very unique story. I don't think yeah. there's too many people in the world that have a story like that. Yeah. And I don't know. It's interesting. Yeah. So. Um, oh, I'll I'll give you a preview of my next story. Okay. When I was uh, stationed in Germany before Spain. I took a trip to, well, I signed up for a trip to Amsterdam, but I never made it. So, I'll tell you why. Oh, right, in my right, next right. Sorry. In your adventure, next adventure in the life of, oh. at the time, it was Airman Kraus. I wasn't a sergeant yet. Okay. Okay. See. And we're back after that commercial <laughs> break. Well, it doesn't work that way, honey, but yeah. okay. Um... Yeah, this is something I'll never forget. Another John Kraus story. Right. I um, From the Air had Force? signed up. Yes. Uh huh. I was stationed at Ramstein Air Base, Germany, and I signed up for uh, a weekend trip to Amsterdam. We had tours that took us all over. I mean, we had tours going to Italy and Switzerland and, uh, you know, Belgium and, you know, France. And I just thought it would be fun to go to Amsterdam, so I signed up for it. Well, yeah, you wouldn't want to go there. So the bus comes, we we meet the bus at the NCO Club, which is like our, our bar. Club, it's like the right? non-commissioned officer. Oh, club. No, okay, the non-officer's the club. club. Right, okay. I was a non-commissioned officer. Well, I was, wasn't was even a... Officer. Yeah, non-commissioned officer Were you an time. officer I was, or wait, a gentleman? Was, I was both. <laughs> Just like the movie. Yeah. No, I had to do it. No, that's okay. <laughs> and so uh, the bus arrives. We all sit on the bus. We're ready to go. Got all my luggage on the bus. And, and then there's an announcement. There's going to be about a half hour delay. I don't remember what the delay was about. But they said, uh, just be back in a half hour um, and we'll take off then. So I, like everyone else, went inside the NCO club and I remember I got a slice of pizza, you know, thought I'd have a little dinner. And I don't know, 15, maybe 20 minutes are gone. And I come outside to get on the bus and it's gone oh, with my luggage. Oh no! Yeah. And uh, So what'd you think? I went back in the club and tried to figure out how to call someone. Right. And so anyway, I had wasn't able to track down the bus. And did you get your luggage later? Never got my luggage oh, back. Are you serious? Yeah. So oh, it was just it was good. just you know a couple pairs of jeans and you know. I know. Nothing. But, well, you're a guy. Yeah. But a woman, that'd be a big yeah. deal. Oh, so my. anyway. Um, that Monday morning, I ran into this girl in the hospital. Since I was a dental tech, we were um, um, part of the, oh, we're the, doing the hospital. Story. And um, <laughs> I ran into this girl, and I said, because she was on the tour. I knew uh -huh. her. I knew her. Right. And I said, hey, what happened? I get out there in 15 or 20 minutes, and the bus was gone. She said, oh, that tour guide was all screwed up. He thought he left you in Amsterdam. <laughs> Okay, I'm sorry. I thought we were on another story. When oh, you said the girl. I oh, thought you what? Uh, a, a romantic story? Yeah. Sorry oh, about that. No, uh, no. We, I may or may not tell that one. Yeah, right. That yeah. might be inappropriate. Yeah, maybe um, I can put a, a disclaimer on that one. Rated not G. Uh, so anyway. Yeah, right. Sorry, guys. So I anyway, um, it was crazy <laughs> that the tour guide thought he left me in Amsterdam. And so he never took a head count before they left. Oh, he took a head count when they're coming back. And, you know... Was he I, drunk? Uh, I mean, really, that's who knows? crazy. He was incompetent. But so, you never got to go to Amsterdam. Never made it to Amsterdam. Oh, and like I told Cindy, maybe it was God's way of saying, not a good idea. Because yeah, Amsterdam can be a little know. crazy. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, I went to the tour guide office there on base and so what they did was they gave me a full refund 
and they Ooh. gave me a choice of any tour that they offered. This, so this is I called went, making it right. So yeah, I so I, I took a, like a four day skiing trip to Interlock in Switzerland. Ooh, that sounds like a and good uh, It was fantastic. Uh, Switzerland to me is the most beautiful country I've oh, ever been wow. to. And it was wonderful. Um, but, uh, and that was a great trip. That, it was a, fantastic. An, uneventful. I was just going to say Yeah. Um, well, that could be a good thing. Yeah. yeah. So, nope, still have to advance to it, but I probably will never go. But that's okay. You know that song by Three Dog Night, Never Been to Spain? Never, Never been, been to Amsterdam. Yeah. It doesn't quite have the same ring. No, it, but, uh, no, but yeah. Never been to Amsterdam. Amsterdam. But I kind of <laughs> like the night. Yeah. Well, I would know because I've never been there. Well, that's why I wanted to go. I mean, here I am. This was, I was 20, maybe 19. Oh, I was 19 or 20 because it was my first assignment in Europe. What a life. And yeah. I mean, you first went, your first assignment was Spain, right? I spent five years in Europe from 18 to Wait, 23. was it Spain, then Germany? It was Germany, then Spain. Oh, I got it wrong. Okay, yeah. so how long three in years Germany? in Germany, two years in Spain. Oh, I know what story we can tell. The Maybe. girlfriend that was in Spain who didn't speak English and John didn't speak Spanish. Oh, well, that's not much of a her story. For, well, you dated her for three months, right? I won her. And so, yeah, I met this girl, you know, in, in Spain, the nightlife is, in Madrid, the, my, the nightlife is amazing. I mean, some of the clubs don't even open until 1 in the morning. And they go I know, night. that's so crazy. The clubs yeah. here close at 3 I in the morning. Such, and my buddy Mark and I, we were both blonde-haired Americans. Good and, looking. Uh, and oh, and they let you in, like the movies, or I've seen this yeah, lots of movies. Yeah, they wave us in. Hey, oh, oh, you have a blonde oh, line. line. Uh, spoke the language of love, yeah. I guess. And, and, and uh, 
after a while, I was like, no mas. <laughs> I don't know what no I more. said. Yeah. And, um, you know, I felt bad because she was sweet and we... Was she, did you break her heart? Yeah, I guess I did. She <laughs> was upset. You did that with other girls. No, I don't mean to. Well, there was another girl and you, she really liked you, but you said intellectually she didn't <laughs> Yeah, like you do. Oh, well, thanks. Oh, you do. like fishing. Yeah, Cindy's but, the best. Oh, this selfie's the Anyway, best. that's really not much of a story, but... Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. John broke a lot of hearts along the way. He left a string. Johnny the Heartbreaker. A broken heart. Yeah. No, why don't Johnny the Heartbreaker. Hey, that could be a man. Johnny and the Heartbreaker. Oh, uh, I'd say that uh, wouldn't taken. be original. I know, that's what I'm saying, it's yeah. probably taken. Oh, sit, we have this little thing, like, if we hear a, a strange little turn of words or whatever, we say, wow, that would make a good band name. Yeah, we do that. What was that you came up with? Oh, this no, morning? no, that's, I can't see, no, no, no. No, that's fine. A girl's band called Perpetual Purr. Oh, oh. okay, I, I was thinking something else. Um, okay. No, what was it? Uh, preponderance of pearl? No, it wasn't. It was something. It was something. It, it started with a P. It prolonged, was... prolonged pearl. Oh, I think that might have been. That's cute. I think it'd be a great name for a girl band. Yeah, like a pearl band. Whatever. Yeah. I thought a good name for no, a heavy. I think it was like jazz, like pearl, you know. I don't know. Yeah. Well, I thought a good name for a heavy metal band would be Rat Milk. <laughs> there is a it band called Rat. Sure. Oh yeah, we got um, Amazon Premium, not Amazon, YouTube. YouTube Premium. I've been using that for myself, so when I watch my YouTube videos, I don't have to watch commercials. And it's $10.99 a month, which I was wanting it. So we have a family plan for $17.99 a month, so we got on that. We both have commercial-free YouTube channels. So and nice. You can have up to five channels. For the so same price. Like two. But then you get a free music. Um, yeah, that's um, what I was gonna say. So we got an email saying included is free music. So this morning when we woke up, we were both you. They ask you for the kind of music you like, rock, pop. And there's like a indie, thousand bands. Whatever. And then they ask you for yeah specific bands you like. And we were we spent like an hour on that. What were some we of the funny names that band, we came across? But we came oh, across a lot of. One of my band favorites was never heard of. One of my favorites was Trampled by Turtles. Never oh, heard that band before. I know. Yeah. Somebody out there's heard of it. Oh yeah. In fact, I'm sure there's people in our audience that have heard of it. Let That's us know what if I you meant. have. <laughs> Um, Try, there, what are, okay. um, there were some other some ones. other ones I can't think off the top of my head. I know there was a lot. We actually had we have a lot. Some naughty ones. That's so, for sure. Yeah, there was. Well, we don't have to say. There was a P one, um, but it's actually the name of a band, which I don't know how they get rid of. I mean, get rid of it. How they uh, get away with it? Because mm -hmm. they're not going to be able to announce that certain venues. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Bleep Bleep. <laughs> or Bleep You. Just we throw some weird words out to Alexa yes. to see if uh, she comes up with anything. That's actually quite fun. Try it sometime. Yeah, and it could be any words. And yeah. yeah, just like, hey, I wonder if there's a song or a band called this, blah, blah, blah. And invariably, there is. Yeah, I mean, crazy. almost always. Like she'll say, Here's da 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 da. And that's like, uh -huh. what? There really is uh -huh. a song called that? And there was one band, and I just thought, because there's a TV show by this name, and it's kind of a funny name. So I said, Alexa, play Morningwood. <gasps> yes, that was funny. And there's a band called Morningwood. And we actually end up liking them, and I think they're pretty good. we got their CD. <laughs> so check it out, you guys, Morningwood. I, they're really good. They're indie. And John said that there's a kid's. Show. Yeah, it was on Nickelodeon, and it's called <laughs> that. I've never heard of. And I thought there is no way that that's by accident. <laughs> that they came up with that name because it sounds totally innocuous, and just it was just no, a no. joke thrown on the country. You know. 
I Some of you may not even know what we're Wait, talking about. You saw the show, so what was the premise? It was a kid's show. It was called yeah, Morning Yeah, but Wood. what was it about? Why I, was it I called that? I didn't really sit down for a whole episode. <laughs> I just saw the, you know. Did, oh, your kids didn't watch it. Uh-uh. Oh, okay. No. All right. Well, we're, yeah, we're kidding. No, they were SpongeBob. So um, tell the territory. Teletubbies. Wait, um, earlier. Oh, I couldn't do Teletubbies. I still remember the song. Winky. Tinky Winky. Oh. Dipsy. La la. Poo. <laughs> Teletubbies. So Teletubbies. It was so dumb. But you know, it, it was, wasn't for it us. It was weird. It was. Yes, it was bizarre. It was very odd. Uh, it was like it, they, it was like a cartoon if you're on acid. Yeah, exactly. Uh, like Barney Gone Wild or something. It was just because they had different colors and they like purple and blue and, and they were all very effeminate. Okay, we're not gonna go there. But anyway. Uh, Sure. Oh.